Hey Fred, welcome to Quest Givers. Today we're gonna to talk about why giving players meta information is bad. It's so bad. <laughs> if you're looking for adventure, grab the modules each month to support the channel and play the campaign with your gaming group. You're sure to get hooked on adventure. Thank you for joining, I mean, thank you for joining us on Quest Givers and you can help support the making of these free videos on YouTube by purchasing our products on questgivers.com. There's modules, RPG tools, quick quests, minis, all kinds of things coming out. We've got guest adventures, all that sort of stuff is coming along down the pipeline and our Kickstarter on September 1st for the North Road campaign book. That's gonna be very exciting. Now this video, why should you not give players meta information? I wanna tell the players what's going on. They're silly, they don't know. Okay, so I think at the most basic level is you don't want to explain the story, right? You want the play, you want that mystery. You want the players to find it out naturally. They're going through the adventure and it's fun for them to have that aha moment, right? Don't take that away from them. Don't be explaining everything. Oh, you know, in the, in the bar comes the main villain for the campaign and he, he threatens you and says, I will destroy you. And then he leaves, you know, it's like, no, don't do that. <laughs> let them see Please, him do something stop. horrible. You know, let them see him do something horrible and he's just like, whatever. You know, like you can't, you can't touch this. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, don't, uh, yeah, don't explain that to the characters. Let them find it out naturally. Yeah, and from that, don't identify the roles of the characters. Like, you know, oh, this is the main villain's henchman. Or, you know, this is the secret guard captain, or it's the leader of the Thieves Guild. Don't, don't tell them that. They need to find that out. That's like, you know that, but they don't know that. But you act in the way that that character would act, and then the, char the players will discover this fact down the line as the story evolves and, and, and builds. Um, yeah, because... You you're, you're kind of lessening the experience considerably when you do that. But what about stats? Yes, yeah, stats. Don't, don't tell the players the stats, right? <laughs> I mean, that's, I think that's a pretty basic one that most DMs know, experienced DMs. But if you're a new DM, you might know, not know that, right? You might just show them the stats or have them out or whatever. Yeah, don't show the stats. Uh, let them, you know, f they're probably going to figure out if you're fight doing something like D&D, &D, they're going to figure out the armor class naturally. Eventually, they're going to, oh, this number hits and this number doesn't. But you don't, you don't have to tell them, you know, Oh, you need an armor. They have an armor class of twelve, or you know, you need this to hit, or whatever. Uh, let them figure that out naturally, and you know, it can be, it can be fun because. It, it, you know, if you don't tell them, something may be harder to, to, to hit or damage than you expected, you know, or something may be easier to hit or damage than you expected. So if you just rattle off the stats immediately, then the players don't have that, that fun of discovery in the game that makes it interesting. So yeah, that's, that's just a very basic one. So if you're, if you're new and you don't do that, or if you're new and you don't know that, don't do that. <laughs> well, we talked about this in the, the Monsters as Problems to Solve video a few videos back we'll probably put a link up there um, that's where we talked about the goblins coming over the mound they're vampire goblins don't tell them they're vampire goblins don't even tell them they're goblins describe what they are but don't name them you know and when it comes to abilities don't tell the players they have an ability uh, let the players figure it out. If the goblin starts to breathe fireballs, they're going to realize, hell, this goblin can breathe fireballs. It's going to change the dynamics of what's happening. But if you say, be careful, this goblin breathes fireballs, you've kind of lessened the impact of when the goblin burps a fireball at them. Um, very interesting. We should put a note there, you know, fireball breathing goblins. That should be in a module. <laughs> Along with the hordes of undead I keep wanting to put in there. Maybe in the next one. <laughs> yeah, it lessens the mystery of the game. You know, this, it, it waters down the player engagement in the story, which basically ruins what you're doing as a GM. And when it comes to stats, if you're a really good GM, there are no stats. <laughs> you're making it up as you go along. So, you know, 
you only need to create the stats when you need to have stats. So, you know, an experienced GM, new GMs, I wouldn't advise doing this. I would always put down stats so that you understand the mechanics of the game. But when you've been doing it a long time, whatever game you're playing, you'll be able to play it without actually having stats. Um, and you can just sort of make those stats up on the new monsters you create on the fly that makes the world interesting. But what about player agency? Oh yes, player agency is a good one. If you if you start metagaming and giving them all the stuff, you're giving them the store essentially, you're not you're taking away that agency, right? It's like if you if you make the path so obvious for the players that they don't feel like they have any choice, then, you know, it's you're just taking the fun away because the fun comes from feeling like this is a living, breathing, dynamic world. And once you just shut that down, <laughs> you know, by kind of like metagaming, then you're like, you're taking that fun away from the players, I think. Yeah, I mean, you, player agency is, as we said in previous videos, player agency is essentially choice. Once you remove choice, you're kind of, they're just on a fixed road they can't, there's no diversion. I think the number one rule for new GMs is to realize whenever you say something, you must be giving the players more than one choice. If you're not giving them more than one choice, uh, then there's a problem. Um, but on the flip side of that, don't give them so many choices that they then become paralyzed because they don't know of the 15 things you've been talking about. They don't know which to go. So as we've said again and again we'll beat it into you by the end of the series which will be years from now <laughs> you must be succinct you know don't go on for two pages blah 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 first of all they won't remember half the stuff you've been talking about and secondly you've given them so many options and so many choices that they're never going to be able to find the story amongst all the weeds of description <laughs> Vague is good, specific is bad. <laughs> and you know, another thing that I, that I feel that leads into is don't just say the name of the monster, right? <laughs> like if they go into somewhere that's haunted, right? And you have all these cool haunted encounters. Like don't say, oh, you see a ghost before you're rattling some chains. You know, say, oh, you know, you hear something rattling behind the door and do you, what do you want to, what do you want to do? And they look, you know, they, oh God, they look in the door and they see, you know, the, this ghost and there's, you know, chains whipping about and it's, you don't say ghost, you just say, you see this spectral being, you know, and chains are whipping about and it's wailing in pain. You know, they're probably going to guess that it's a ghost. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can be even more vague. You can just say there's a swirl of like white glowing mist with this sort of chain moving around within it. Um, you, you, you're, you're saying ghost without saying ghost. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> I was. But yeah, right. Like, be a little more vague about it. Like Gareth just said, like it's a swirling mist and the you know, chain is whipping around the room. And maybe that's when like the human form starts to form after they go in the room or something starts to materialize. But it's still like a translucent form. And so, yeah, just don't say ghost. Because <laughs> you know? they don't know what it is. You know, in games where there's lots of different kind of spectral entities, you know, it could, well, it could be a specter or a banshee or whatever, you know, other stats you want to give it. But if you, if you say it's ghost, you've just meted them the information right there. There's no discovery on the player's part. You, you've, uh, you know, you've, you've not necessarily taken away the player agency, but like give them too much information that they can use against the thing. If they don't know what it is, they got to figure out what it is. Well, when you say it's a ghost, they can't make an education check to figure out what it is and earn experience. You know, they can't they can't use the character skills or the character backgrounds or go oh my god that looks like my mother you know um they can't add this flavor into the game they can't do this because you've shortcut something to a very specific answer that is not going to you know really help you as a gm what you've really done is you've painted yourself into a corner and removed player agency once you've painted yourself into a corner, you can't backtrack on it being a ghost. You've just said it's a ghost. So you can't now turn back and go, well, actually, it's a spectral dragon 
mind floating around, you know, that forms into an actual dragon. You know, it's like, no, you said it was a ghost. <laughs> That's not what you said, Mr. GM. <laughs> I know. I was listening. Players will call you out on that because once you say, <laughs> once you say something is something, that becomes it in the game, right? That's what makes something real. When you when you when you as a DM tell them something, uh, you know it becomes real. Uh, yeah, so don't, <laughs> or at least try not to do that, you know. I mean, if you have a bunch of monsters and they've encountered the monster before and there's nothing particularly new about it, you know, you could describe it as, oh, you see a goblin or, you know, whatever. Uh, but, you know, I, the more exotic monsters, I would keep them, you know, as description and let them figure it out. Also, little things like when you say, okay, you can travel to the next town, and the player says, what is the name of the next town? And you can then say to the player, you tell me what the name of the next town is. And then the player goes, okay, uh, Pottersville. It's like, all right, great. So the next town is Pottersville. And then the other player goes, um, well, uh, what do we know about Pottersville? They say, well, do an education check. So, or an insight check or something. So they do a check and then he succeeds and say, you tell me what you know about Pottersville. And then the player's like, oh, okay, cool. Well, Pottersville, from my recollection, was this wine farming community where, you know, at one time there were hordes of undead, because there are always hordes of undead, um, that, that fought the town. And now the, the wine has been poisoned, so they now make raisins. The raisins is their main export. Great. Now, you as the GM have done zero work. <laughs> The players are invested in the world. Why? Because they created it. All you said is we're going to the next town. You know, this is where the real work happens. Give the players the opportunity to do this. Now, while you're traveling to the town, you can now, okay, there's this raisin place. Now, what can I do with raisins? Dry, desiccate. Ooh, zombies that have been dried and desiccated with the raisins. You know, and then boom, Nike, you've got this hole. The undead have risen again in Pottersville. I, I literally just did that now. We didn't pre-do this. I like thought of this right now. That's GMing. <laughs> That's how it works. That's real-time GMing. <laughs> of course you want to add more zombies. Come on. <laughs> Who doesn't want to add more zombies? It's going to be a Precinct 13, this Pottersville. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, like if you are basing the story on a specific movie, don't tell them like it's going to be Precinct 13. Let them find out like towards the end or tell them after the adventure. We basically just played Precinct 13. Oh, Night of the Living Dead. Oh. <laughs> you know, it, you're giving them that experience without actually telling them that's what's happening. Don't tell them you're playing Star Wars. Hey friend, thanks for watching. And uh, we're gonna have a video every Friday, so check us out. Don't forget to check out our website, questgivers.com. And we're gonna have a uh, <laughs> And we're gonna have a We're gonna have a sh <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna stay in. <laughs> you won't have it down now. I have the power of editing. My brain is locked up today. <laughs> We're going to have our Kickstarter on September 1st, so make sure you check that out when that happens. Take care, and we'll see you next time. See you Friday.